All we're simply doing is multiplying f of x times g of x. So 1 over the square root of x plus 1 times g of x, which is the square root of 1 minus x. That's really over 1. Well, guys, since we're multiplying over 1, we can just combine them into one function, right? So f of g of x equals the square root of 1 minus x all over the square root of x plus 1. Right? Now, so that's the simplified answer. Now let's find the domain. Now again, we have two different kinds of domains. We have a radical in the denominator. So we know in the denominator it can't equal to negative 1 because that would make that 0. So we'd say x plus 1 has to be greater than 0. And then we have this other one where 1 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Right? We have two radicals. We know both of them have to be greater than 0. Here we solve x has to be greater than negative 1. Here we solve, but remember this has the flipping of the sign. x has to be greater than or equal to positive 1. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to flip the sign. <laughs> so when you divide by negative, you have to flip the sign. So I have all my values of x have to be greater than negative 1, but my values of x have to be, yes? Why does that one have greater than negative 1? Because it's in the denominator. It can't be greater than or equal to, because what if it was equal to negative 1? What would your denominator be? Um, zero. zero. And you can't divide by 0, right? So that's why 0 can't be the denominator. So that's why I changed that to that way, OK? So now, if you guys look at this as like a number line, Here's 0, here's negative 1, here's positive 1. x has to be greater than 1, but x has to be less than or equal to 1, or greater than negative 1. So it looks like this. So the shaded area is right there. So therefore, it's going to be negative 1 union 1. 